So Rosie's has been up to a lot recently. There's been this article going around here talking about the company being for sale for 5.8 million euros. If someone did come in and buy this, some non rollerblader some new person, I think it's quite likely that they would end up cutting aggressive from Rosie's. It could look to an outsider like it's not worth investing in, which is very scary for the future of uh, aggressive Rosie's rollerbladers lovers. Like it seems so uncertain. Now all this kind of like confusion caused uh, Rosie's to actually make an official statement about it. In the past weeks, we've seen rumors going around about the company being for sale and on the edge of being closed. We'd like to assure you all that after 70 years of glorious work, we are here to stay. Rosie's is not going anywhere. Now, a lot of people read that as uh, Rosie's is not for sale. If you read that again, they don't clarify that the company is not for sale. And I think that was intentional. They didn't directly say anywhere that the company is not for sale. They're just saying they're here to stay, which obviously they are. They've been here forever. If someone buys the company, technically Rosie's will still be there. They probably won't change the brand and stuff. The bigger concern is the fact that, you know, are they for sale? Because if they're for sale, if someone new comes in, like I said, they could cut aggressive. And that's what people are worried about. Some people said this in the comments, and this is the part where I am the most disappointed in Rosie's because they do this all the time, dude. I've talked about this before in Blader News. They love to like go off in the comments and argue with people publicly. But anyway, there was a member of the Rosie's staff arguing with someone who was saying, how are they rumors? There was a legit article that came out. And their response to that was, uh, you should pay for the article because uh, this article that we saw earlier, it is a behind a paywall, at least I assume. It is an Italian, so I, I don't really know. So like, you don't know the whole story. They even implied that this is not a real journalist and this is kind of implying it's misinformation, but never clarifying, like never directly saying it's fake and the company is not for sale. The thing that annoys me the most about this, other than the fact that the company is it's scary that Rosie's might go away. I love Rosie's, it's a good company. They treat their writers well when they like them. They have mistreated writers a lot in the past, but the people that are on their team, they look after them well. But the fact that they argue with people in the comments, at least from this one, it wasn't with the, the brand account. I just find that so unprofessional and such a bad look and downright just embarrassing for blading. I think this big company in rollerblading is arguing with people who have valid criticism. Just ignore it, Rosie's, okay? Take my advice. I told you this with the last backlash you had. Ignore it. Or if it's a valid criticism, do a real response, not a like emotional response, okay? But anyway. We're not done talking about Rosie's there though. They did release a new, brand new skate. This is Bobby's new pro skate, a excellent skater, one of the best. It's the sequel to the Domestic Punk, which is still, I think, the best looking skate that's ever came out. Uh, and here's the sequel. It's a skinned M12 uh, that looks a lot like a, a Valo, right? It is a Valo, pretty much. <laughs> Bobby absolutely earned the skate with another beautiful, really well done uh, promo edit for it, which you should definitely check out. So this is an M12, which is notoriously a very narrow, slim boot. And the, the benefit of that is it's quite maneuverable, small, and like, you know, low profile. You can, you get a lot out of that if you fit it. But uh, this here is an M12 with this big skin on it, which I assume makes it heavier, but also it looks a lot bigger. Just looking at that there, it looks like a big, chunky skate. But knowing that it's an M12, it, it will fit very narrowly and slim. So you're getting the worst of both parts. You've got a big, wide, clunky skate that fits like a very narrow, slim one. So I don't know. That's my <laughs> critique on it being an M12. But hey, a bigger sole plate on an M12 is a really good idea. It's going to modernize that skate. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy this thing exists. So here I have a comment thread, which I assume is probably still up on the picture of the, the Bobbies. This dude here has a pretty valid criticism about like you're really bringing back some the skins back from a sub brand and relabeling them. And like how that's good business, right? And Rosie's actually responded to this, which is never a good idea, just a bad look. And they're saying, where'd you get this information that they're fairly aggressive? They got all in their feelings, they're arguing in there. The big response was the fact that uh, obviously Rosie's owns Valo. Rosie's is Valo. It is them. It was always them. When Julio was like running the brand, he was just doing the marketing. It's not like he owned Valo. I think I probably mostly have this opinion because of how defensive they were about it. It just kind of annoyed me that they're so publicly in the comments arguing with people about the fact like, oh, we have the right to be a Valo skate rebranded, right? But I think it would have gone a long way if they just somehow put in here a homage or like a, a nod of respect to the Valo. Like I said, here, we have brought the Valo back to life, the skin Valo, here it is. I think that would have gone such a long way, in my opinion anyway. But that's my big critique. Once again, this is a really cool skate. I think it's cool. I love the fact that it has the text on it. I like that they're taking risks and it's not just a black and white skate. 
It looks really cool, and I'm really glad that Bobby is the person behind it, and it's the domestic punk legacy. It's cool overall. Rosie's does cool shit, but they really need to stop arguing in their comments publicly. It's such a bad look, and it's very embarrassing. As a rollerblader, I find it embarrassing. Imagine like, I was going to do like a skateboarding analogy, but skateboarding companies probably do argue in their comments, so let's be real. Imagine like you got a Samsung phone, and then you go to like their Instagram post about it, and Samsung's telling you like, you suck for having an Apple. How could you even compare us to Apple? It's like, they would never do that. It's so unprofessional, dude. I don't know. It's a good reflection of rollerblading, right? Rollerblading's always had this kind of toxic kind of fighting in comment sections forever. So they fit right in, I guess, if that's the case. And uh, also someone had the idea that, you know, since Rossi's this for sale for 5.8 million euros, we should buy it. So uh, I'm thinking that's a good idea. We should all come together, everyone in rollerblading, chip in a little bit, and then rollerblading, the rollerblading scene can own Rosie's and it will go so well, right? Can you imagine it? It's going to be the best thing ever, right? Like it'll be complete democracy. We'll all be able to decide what to do next. That's utopia. It'll be the best thing. So we should do it. Don't know link in the description. I'm kidding. There's no way. But anyway, <laughs> speaking of new skates, so there are a lot to talk about starting off with the brand new Farmer Sways with the brand new Sway Soul Play on it. And interesting to note, we talked about that earlier, that Sway Soul Play is supposed to be compatible with our other skates, like the Them Skate. Turns out it's only uh, compatible with certain sizes, which Power Slide's been doing stuff like that kind of consistently, which isn't cool. But uh, I mean, they were compatible to some. But anyway, these look great. I'm glad to see a nice black and orange look. Look how good those look, man. That's a great setup. Farmer's still getting supported, which is great. We ain't done with that though. There's more new Sways if this slideshow will hurry up. This boot was leaked a long time ago, but it's the uh, Sway All-Star, which is supposed to be a uh, one of the classic skates brought back. I actually don't know what classic skate. That's how much of a new age blader I am. But once again, it looks great. That new soul plate really does look really good on the skate. And the Sway is an excellent budget aggressive blade that I do recommend to anyone getting into it. Out of the aggressive scene though, we have some brand new Palisade Next Trinity skates. We've got this nice black one here behind the alert, uh, which looks great. Another great try setup that's definitely worth setting. It's a favorite for a lot of people, but there's an even cooler version of it, which is the Mary Munoz Pro version of it, which looks like a Pro Aeon, a beautiful minty uh, greeny blue color, which is so nice. I love the little silver bit here. It looks so good. And uh, it's great to see her getting looked after. That's a great skate setup, but there's so many more skates to talk about. We're not done. Razors has another new Colt. It's a beautiful navy color, a great choice in colorway. The classic, great skate. While I'm talking about Razors again, I do want to clarify that uh, they did announce a new royalty program uh, with the Jeff Howard skate, which was $30 a skate, which was a huge, huge jump. And it was really good to see. So uh, yeah, we don't need to, you don't have to feel quite as bad for skating Razors, but they do, they still aren't the best. But anyway, more skates. The next skate to talk about is the brand new Rollerblade Blank skates have been spotted in a brand new color, the sick Moon Gray. I uh, was Swin skating them. Who uh, I got roasted for saying his name wrong before. I, I just can't pronounce the SV. I'm sorry. He's the man. No hate. No hate needed. But look how cool these skates look. They look really good. Uh, this was in a little promo on Instagram. It looks very blue. You're right. But uh, just because all the other in the other stories, you can see the people skating them and they look gray. It's like a gray blue, I assume. I would hope this is a pro skate for him because if anyone has earned it, it's him. Uh, one of the best skaters in the world. Really good shit. And uh, we have good news about the Rollerblade Blank SK Betas too. Rollerblade is spotted saying that they are less than a month away. So they should be out very soon. If you're waiting to get your actual size, the full sizing, less than a month away. Oh, that was three weeks ago when I screenshot it. So it must be like literally around the corner. And I can't wait for that. Shout out to Blank. Good skates. Uh, we're not done talking about skates though, but we kind of are because the next thing we're talking about is not skates it's a, a hat and it's a sick uh new hat range from mesmers from heavy distribution look at this beautiful frog hat it's so cool man uh, this is they, they did a good job choosing this as the front picture to put in the montage but yeah sick mesmer frog hat and a bunch of other really cool hats uh they haven't sold out yet but they are limited edition so if you want to grab them i'd act fast uh before we get back to talking about skates so there was a pride anti-rocker made by chroma which is beautiful and glittery they actually even uh, showed off how they made these are all handmade uh, I assume by law at Balance Distribution Center, which is so cool. And this is such a good idea, a great way to celebrate Pride Month. And uh, yeah, shout out to all our LGBTQ rollerblades out there. We love you guys. Back to talking about skates. So we got some brand new wearable electric skates. Now these are kind of more like quad skates. They're designed to like strap on the shoes and be very minimal and small, but also get you around. And I like the idea. I'm really still praying for someone to just make electric skates work. It's gotta be possible. But uh, these look very promising. Uh, other things that's really exciting, uh, Loco has started uh, a thing called Loco Labs where they're going to collab with people. Their first collab is with Mushroom Blading, who uh, I will add once again. They uh, 
usually are the ones that spark all the biggest news stories. So shout out to them. Uh, but the first piece I have is this beautiful shirt looking super mystical and mushroomy. Really beautiful, really well done. Available now, limited edition. Supports some of the coolest content creators way ahead of their time uh, in the rollerblading industry, the Mushroom Blading Boys. Uh, and speaking of magical rollerbladers, uh, we got an exceptional edit that you guys need to check out from um, my main man, Robbie Pitts. He always puts out the most creative, he's like the nicest, coolest, best, most creative skater in the industry. His edits never disappoint. This one's just an edit this time, not a super long piece video, but it is filled with so much cool shit. He's not just going to like a handrail or a ledge. There's a lot of these little slide things like that. I think it's so cool, man. And lots of like, he's got knee pads on, he does like knee slides, is this one? It's so cool, dude. He just makes it look super fun. I love the creativity. And Robbie Pitts is like such a good dude and we are absolutely blessed to have him in blading. Shout out to Robbie Pitts. Definitely check this one out. It'll be linked in the description. There's been a recent trend to put rollerblading and quad skating in video games. First one, this is free to play, Roller Champions. We talked about this years ago on Blader News. It's out, uh, it's, it's on a bunch of different platforms. There is even cross play. Uh, I gave it a go last night live on Twitch and it is a, a decent amount of fun. I definitely recommend uh, giving it a go if you have some time to kill. Uh, it does hit that kind of rollerblading vibe. There's like pumping, jumping. Essentially, it's like a game where it's like, uh, it's hard to explain, but it's very competitive and it's a lot of fun. Uh, shout out to Dat Boy Antics for helping me out and Kishlo and Alex. Uh, we teamed up and uh, we dominated. It was sick. But uh, yeah, I think this is ultimately going to be really good for blading. I can see a lot of people uh, playing, getting really into this game and then getting the urge to skate, which is good for skating. Uh, right now it is kind of dying off. It had quite a big launch, but it is slowly kind of dying off. You never know though. Hopefully it takes off and becomes the next Rocket League. That'd be so good for blading. Uh, but it is a trend of rollerblading games. The next one that was announced was uh, called Roller Dome. And this game looks so good, dude. Uh, it's like, this is not rollerblading, it's quad skating, where a roller champion has both. This is like a uh, third person shooter, kind of like, with the art style like of a like an edgy jet set radio that looks very interesting. It's a weird concept. Look at it. It looks so good. You, you just, there's like, you play with time, you're doing flips and shooting people. Doesn't that sound fucking sick? That looks so good, dude. Very exciting. Uh, I'll link to the trailers if you want to watch them yourself again. Uh, there is more than that though. Uh, obviously there is a Bomb Rush Cyberfunk that's been happening too. And Bomb Rush Cyberfunk uh, it's supposed to come out this year sometime. I'm very, very excited for that one. I hope it comes out this year. That's the Jet Set Radio kind of like new Jet Set Radio. Even there was Sega announced there's a new Jet Set Radio coming as well. But uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. I love that this trend is happening. It's only going to be good for blading. Uh, but speaking of games with rollerblading, the biggest games of all time, the Olympic Games, uh, recently had an article written up talking about getting scooter or roller freestyle in the Olympics and... Uh, Los Angeles 2028. Uh, this would be huge. I'll be really happy to have blading in there. I would be very surprised if it happened. I don't have a lot of faith. And uh, if scootering got in, I'd be very happy for that too. I think scootering does deserve to be in there. And if anything, they, sh they should get in before us since it's a much bigger sport. But uh, I don't know, it's very exciting. I definitely recommend checking this article out. It's very short and sweet. But if rollerblading got into the Olympics, it b becomes a lot more like legitimate sport to a lot of people. Uh, which could bring so much more new people in it. it could bring funding into it too for people that like you could represent your country it could only be a uh, a good thing and i know a lot of people don't want rollerblading to be like in the olympics because they feel like it's not the right sports for that you know aggressive like that's not core cool, right but i feel like the best part about uh, like an action sport especially like rollerblading is it's so diverse you can be so many different types of skater you can be the skater that takes it super seriously likes park skating and competition skating real clean cut and nice and you can also be the super sketchy scary to walk past person who destroys the street you know there's room for everyone and this will only be good for blading and i really i really do hope it happens but yeah my hopes aren't super high and speaking of getting my hopes up there was this amazing edit they're once again reunited the best razors duo in the world sneak and jake put together a nice uh, long five minute edit which really impressed me. It's filmed beautifully. It's that perfect skate skate video vibe that I like. It's like ticking all the boxes for me. And the boys went all out. These are some of the best skaters in the world. They've been like leading everyone since they were like two years old. 
And uh, this doesn't disappoint. I definitely recommend checking this edit out. And then I have Key Blades, a valued member of my community here, landing his first 360, which I'm so hyped about. He's a dude that's picking up shit so fast. Really good blade, a massive congrats to him on that. And I, I also wanna take this time to thank my patrons and members for helping me uh, make the show. It wouldn't be possible without them. So massive thank you to Anthony and Christian, James, Palmer, Matt, Sonic Sports, Tice, and Xander, as well as the rest of my patrons and members. And everyone here in chat, uh, if it wasn't for these guys, the show would be horrific to film life. So uh, I'm very thankful for them being here. Hopefully I can switch to them. There we go. Thank you guys for being in all the subs and all the support. You make this super fun. Now to round us off, I've got a very scary clip of Fishing David uh, taking one of these fours that probably could have killed him. It's very scary, man. Check this out, dude. So he's just skating this spot, right? It's got a nice little pole here for him to do some spins. And he laced the trick, super nice, really creative. He's a great skater, by the way, one of my favorite, very creative. But this is where it all goes wrong, dude. Imagine, dude, he's like, bro, if that arm didn't get there, he would have a pole through his back, dude. And I would hate to think what happened. So uh, thank God he was safe. Anyway, you know the drill. Thank you all so much for watching. Appreciate you guys. Go for a skate today. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, make sure you check out uh, this, the last episode of Blade of News. You need to watch it. It's right here. Go watch it. Uh, I keep you up to date and I'll see you guys later on. Have a good night. Go skate.